Hey, you guys. The ANC still enjoys majority of support. The ANC still enjoys majority of support. If you were to listen to the media telling you that the African National Congress is hated by the people of this country, if you were to listen to the media telling you that the polls are telling you the African National Congress is going to lose, you would actually think that the people of this country are actually fed up with the ANC and they want a better governance. You would think that if the African National Congress comes out and says, guys, we have a rally or there's an imbiz or somewhere, the president is coming, you would think that the people are not going to go to that event or you would think that the people who would go to that event would simply go to that event to confront the president because the African National Congress has done a terrible job of running the country. That's what you would think. I mean, that's what we would expect from a sane country. But it looks like South Africa is an insane country. It's an insane country. I remember the last time when President Ramaphosa came to, to the free state. He came to, to a sports center near where I stay. And I looked at that event. I honestly thought that people will not go to that event. Or I thought the people are going to boycott that, that 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 event because you can see man our neighborhoods are turned into illegal dumping so you can see the sewage is everywhere man people are unemployed you would think that all of these things man taken into consideration the president would actually not get a good welcome because the party has been doing a terrible job but that's not the welcome that ramaphosa got that's not the welcome that Ramaphosa got, man. People went to that event of the African National Congress. People were wearing the ANC regalia, left, right, and center. And that's when I actually realized that, geez, man, the people of this country still love the African National Congress. The people in my neighborhood, they are not willing for change. They are not going to vote for change. The way things are now, that's how they want things to be. Actually, they want things to be worse. They want things to be worse, man. I was angry. If you guys remember, I did a live stream that, that, that day. I was angry because I didn't think the people, man, in my community, the people who are suffering under the, the, the rule of the African National Congress, the same people would go out and support the ANC and actually give the president a warm welcome. If we lived in the same country, man, President Ramaphosa was never going to be able to walk anywhere without actually being confronted and be like, President, you are doing a terrible job. People are not working. You are doing a terrible job. State-owned entities are crumbling. You are doing a terrible job. Our infrastructure is crumbling. You are doing a terrible job. There is crime in left, right, and center. You are doing a terrible job. You are now making people to depend on the, on the government instead of your governance actually creating a conducive environment where businesses can actually come and thrive so that people can find employment. You would think that people would actually confront Ramaphosa and talk with him about these issues. You would not think that if Ramaphosa says, I'm coming, people are going to dance, they're going to wear the ANC regalia, man. they're going to sing, they're going to ululate, they're going to do all sorts of things to show the African National Congress that they love them. Guys, we are going into 2024 election. People were looking at this event of Mbombela. People were actually looking at this event, man. We thought this event was going to fail. I thought that this event was going to fail. I thought less people were going to turn out to Mbombela Stadium. But more people actually turned out to Mbombela Stadium. More people turned out to support the African National Congress, man. Did you see, guys? Did you see how full Mbombela was? It was full, man. It was overflowing. People were full. Even outside, there were people to support the African National Congress, to support the President Ramaphosa. So do you think these people, man, are willing to let the African National Congress go down? The African National Congress is not going to go down. The ANC is not going to go down. I'm starting to think that all of these opposition parties, man, they are simply auditioning to go into coalition with the African National Congress if the ANC does not win in majority. These people are simply auditioning to go into coalition with the African National Congress. There is no party right now in South Africa, man, despite of everything the ANC has done. Despite of everything, man, it shows you the people of this country still want to live under the African National Congress. It doesn't matter what we say. I can come on this platform and shout each and every day. It won't be enough. It won't be enough. We can go to social media. We can say whatever that we want to say. We can do the videos on TikTok. It will never be enough. The poor majority people of this country still enjoy the African National Congress. They love the ANC. They love the ANC. I did it like when you guys actually upset when you saw people, so many people turning out to that ANC event. Wait, like, are you telling me that you were not upset? I was totally upset. I was fuming. I was fuming thinking that guys we are going into the elections in couple of in couple of months. So these opposition parties haven't actually 
achieved anything. They haven't achieved anything in terms of actually convincing the people of this country to look the other way and so, uh, and not vote for the African National Congress or hate the African National Congress. These opposition parties have actually achieved nothing. Have actually achieved nothing. What is the way forward, guys? What is the way forward? What is it exactly are we going to do, man, as the citizens of this country? <laughs> to fight the African National Congress because, man, the support that these people has. The support that these people has. And them going around telling the people of this country that, guys, if the ANC is kicked out of power, chances are you are going to lose your social count. I mean, like, that thing is going to... Even people who, 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 are, not, who are not interested in voting... The NC is going to make sure that those people, men, who are not even interested in voting, those people are going to come out and vote for the African National Congress. Because the president told you, 18 million people in South Africa are depending on social grants. 18 million people are depending on social grants. And 18 million people was added by 10 million people because COVID, 10 million people lost their jobs. 10 million people are now getting the 350 from the government for being unemployed. So it's 18 million people on, on, on basic social counts, and it's 10 million people on this 350. And the president says that, that is an achievement. He says that is an achievement, that the African National Congress is actually taking care of its people. There is no liberation movement in Africa that is actually paying people to sit at home making babies and do nothing. There is no, there is no liberation movement in Africa that is doing that. The ANC, it is the only liberation movement in Africa that is actually paying people to sit at home making babies and do nothing. He says this is an achievement. How can the president say that is an achievement? I mean, like, that simply says that the government is failing to create jobs. I know you guys will say, yeah, it is not the job of the government to create your jobs, but it is the job of the government to make sure that you guys create a conducive environment for people to be even interested in voting, to even interested in investing in South Africa. You can't even convince the investors to come into South Africa when people are leaving the country. Load sharing. Companies are closing because of load sharing. Companies are closing because of load sharing. The president is standing there telling the people of this country that this is a huge, this is a huge, this is a huge, we have 28 million people depending on social accounts in South Africa as we speak. In South Africa, how many people do we have? We have like, what, 59, 60 million people. We have 28 million people, man. That is half of the population, depending on their, on their social count. So is the African National Congress actually going to lose power? Or are we simply wasting our time? Is the ANC going to lose power? Because you, if you look at the support that these people got in Mbombela next time, I think they are going to Moses Mabida Stadium on the 24th of, of February. They are going to, to, to Moses Mabida Stadium. Do you think that Moses Mabida Stadium is not going to be full to, to is not going to be full to capacity? It is going to be full to capacity. It is going to be full to capacity, man. Soon enough, these people will be on the streets, giving people the t-shirts, man. Giving people the t-shirts. Ramaphosa will be hugging your grandmothers and grandfathers. He will be kissing your grandmothers and your grandfathers, man. And these people are going to vote for him. Young people in this country, they don't care about the elections. They don't care about voting. They don't care about the fact that, man, if young people can actually stand up in this country, we can actually change the direction of the country. One election, if young people would actually stop obsessing about TikTok, would stop obsessing about these stupid dance challenges and say, guys, we are suffocating right now, man. Let's kick these people out. One election, then these people are out. But you know how young people are in this country. They don't care about actually the elections. They don't care about the direction of the country. They simply care about their 350s. Even that 350, they call it Ramapos. <laughs> that 350, they call it Ramapos. So young people are not interested in actually changing the direction of the country. And the majority of the voters, man, these people are still the supporters of the African National Congress. They may not like the ANC because of one, two, three. They may not like the ANC because of what they've done. But in overall, they are not going to vote for another political party. They might as well stay at home. Instead of going there and changing anything, they might as well stay at home. These are the kind of voters that we have in South Africa. These are the kind of people that we have in South Africa. So people, it's either they vote for the ANC or they stay at home. So opposition parties, man, I think it is fair to say that you guys have failed. It is fair to say that opposition parties have failed. There's no need for you guys to run. What are you running for? What are you running for? You haven't actually convinced the people of this country to turn their back on the African National Congress. We are going to the elections in a couple of months. You people haven't actually done anything, an iota, to actually convince the people of this country to turn their back on the African National Congress. 
And I think you guys are actually auditioning to go into coalition with the ANC. You are auditioning to go into coalition with the ANC. The ANC is not going to be sweating after 2024 elections if they don't get the majority. The ANC is not going to be sweating. These opposition parties, these smaller polit political parties will kill each other to go into coalition with the ANC. After all, what they want is power. After all, what they want is power. But in terms of actually showing the people of this country that, guys, they haven't, like, they haven't achieved anything. They haven't achieved anything. What are opposition parties saying when they see the stadium full of people celebrating the African National Congress despite everything the ANC has done? If you are a leader of any political party or if you are a member of any political party, then you see the ANC, man, it has a stadium full, full to capacity. So what do you think, like, what do you, like, do you actually think that you have actually done anything? You have done anything. These people haven't done anything. They haven't done anything. And Ramaphosa can see that. Ramaphosa can see that. The ANC can do that. I mean, like, this is why they are pulling out all the stops right now. This is why the president keeps telling, keeps saying that, man, if they vote for another political party, chances are their guns are, are going. Chances are their guns are going. Right now, they are going to the poor people of this country, the poorest of the poor, the people who are depending on the social cancer to survive in this country. The ANC is campaigning for those people. The NC doesn't care about the middle class. They don't care about the middle class. They don't care about, about the country. They don't care about the future of this country. They don't care about giving people good governance. They don't care about all of that. Right now, they are campaigning to the poorest of the poor and say, guys, these are the benefits that you are losing. They know that we have 30 million people 30 million people depending on the social cancer. So if this message really starts going out, man, the NC might the NC might actually win in majority in 2024 election. Do you actually realize that the NC might actually win in majority 2024 election? Because this message is going to inspire people who didn't care about voting. It's going to inspire the voters of the ANC who didn't care about voting for the ANC to say, man, we are now going to save the party. We are now going to save the party, man. And anyway, the president is telling us that these people, men, are going to take away our guns. Are going to take away our guns. We are going to vote, to vote for our Ramaphosa. We are going to vote for our 350s. We are going to vote for our social guns. We are going to vote for all of these things that the ANC is doing, to, is doing for us. Man, the opposition parties have failed. I think you guys might as well prepare yourselves for the next election. This election you have already failed. You have already failed. Opposition parties have failed, man. Opposition parties have failed. How many parties can actually do what the ANC has done? We know right now that the EFF is capable of actually filling up a stadium. Patriotic Alliance has utterly failed in, 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 in filling up a stadium. I remember getting McKenzie saying, in 90 days he will be back again with Patriotic Alliance. Because he believes that Patriotic Alliance was betrayed, man. He believes that someone sabotaged their whole event. That's why even the bus companies did not release the buses. He said a lot of things. But they never actually failed to, 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 to fill that stadium. But right now, the ANC has just filled, has just filled the stadium. The EFF is going, to, the, is going to, to, to manifesto launch in KZN in Moses Mabida. The EFF is going to fill up the stadium. The NC is coming on the 24th. The NC is going to fill up the stadium. So is it fair to say that in 2024 elections, the only political parties that are, 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 actually, are actually in competition is the ANC and the EFF, for lack of a better word, guys? Are you telling me that the only parties that are competing is the ANC and the EFF simply because people can go to their, to their, value, to, to their rallies and everything? The opposition parties have failed, man. In my eyes, the opposition parties have failed. There are those who say nothing has changed, but they also know that they are not telling the truth. By Atanda, Noma Abatandi, the South Africa of today is different and vastly improved from the South Africa of 30 years ago. And that has... And it is very important for these people man, to make this reference about apartheid. They are not going to say South Africa today is better than where the country was 10 years back. South Africa today is better than where the country was 15 years back. The country today is better than where the country was 20 years back. No, 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 no. Apartheid cut. They had to pull the apartheid cut. <laughs> and they know it works every time. It works every time. Every time when someone pulls that apartheid card, man, it works, especially to the poor people of this country, man. It works. 
That's why see, Ramaphosa will never say that we are better than where we were 10 years back. He won't say that. He won't because he knows that we are like like we are worse than we, when we were 10 years back or 15 years back. He knows that we are much worse. That's why he's comparing his current administration with apartheid. Why doesn't he compare his current administration with the Zuma's administration, with Mbeki's administration, Mutante or Mandela's, and say that guys, Nelson Mandela became the president of the country, man. Mbeki took over the ANC. The ANC developed. Right now, I'm the president of the country, man. The, the, no, he's not saying that. He's talking about apartheid. He's talking about apartheid. It's been brought about by the African National Congress. The ANC president says... The 30 years of democracy must never be taken for granted. The ANC has remained loyal to the pursuit of the national democratic revolution and also advancing Africa's renaissance. There have been <laughs> mistakes along the way. And the A lot of mistakes. <laughs> I don't think you can, you can actually call it mistakes at this point. <clears throat> I don't think we can call it. I, I don't think we can call them mistakes at this point. <laughs> there have been missteps because in life, nothing is ever perfect. As the general elections looms closer, Ramaphosa admitted that a coalition government bring with it its own challenges. He called on party members to hit the ground running with the mindset of getting an outright win in the elections. The ANC president further said. But guys, just look at the stadium, man. Just look at the stadium, man. Just look at the stadium, man. These people are going to vote for the ANC. All of those people in the stadium, they're going to vote for the ANC. And the president right now is going to a much bigger stadium in, in, in Moses Mabida. So you might as well expect the rhetoric to be much worse. It's going to be much worse. It's, it's a bigger audience. The rhetoric is going to be much worse. If you think Ramaphosa, I mean, spoke about about it. If you think Ramaphosa just lead people about, like, wait for him to go to Moses Mabid. Wait for him for Moses Mabid to be full. Wait for him. These coalitions are more about political deal makers at the cost of service delivery. These coalitions, they really don't work for our people. But they work for those political deal makers and those who are intent on advancing hey. their own interests. Hey guys, you know, in 1994, this year's hundred and no, come on, man. Hey guys, you know, thinking about the elections and the ANC having so much confidence in winning the elections in an outright majority. I don't know if. <laughs> my, my, my conspiracy theories are going too far you remember last time when there was an elections in the united states of america you remember when trump became the president of, of of the united states the democrats came out and started accusing the russians of actually helping trump becoming the president of the united states that's what they did so if we take that logic is it fair to say that man the russians and the chinese are actually going to help the nc win the elections are the Chinese and the Russians going to help the ANC win the elections? They are their partners in that whole BRICS thing. They support them in this whole thing of, 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 of pursuing justice against Israel. They are, they, are, they are supporting them. Are the Chinese and the Russians going to help the ANC win the elections? Because the ANC is so confident that they are going to win in an outright majority. That's what the ANC is saying. The ANC they are saying, man, we are not even prepared for the coalitions. We are going to win in an outright majority. So how sure are they? How sure are they? Guys, you remember um when Isma Khashule was when Isma Khashule actually announced that he's going to work with Jacob Zuma, one of the things that he said is that the ANC is not going to, to rig the elections. <laughs> the ANC is going is not going to rig the elections. He knows how the ANC does things. Are these people actually going to rig the elections? Are the, is the ANC, with the help of the Russians, actually going to win the, to, to rig the elections? These are some of the things that I sometimes think, think about. Nothing is ever perfect. As the general elections looms closer, Ramaphosa admitted that a coalition government bring with it its own challenges. He called on party members to hit the ground running with the mindset of getting an outright win in the elections. The ANC president further says coalitions 
are more about political deal makers at the cost of service delivery. These coalitions, they really don't work for our people. <laughs> but they work for those political deal makers and those who are intent on advancing their own interests. The ANC president also pointed out what he termed political forces in pursuit of reversing the gains made by the ANC in the last eight years. The anti-transformation forces are converging in pacts. They are forming various pacts. Busbies are all pact this, pact that, and so forth. While at the same time, they are seeking to fragment the forces for change through splinter groups and smaller parties that want to contest the ANC. He also described corrupt... And guys, election, elections and politics, man, this is a very vicious game. To think that <laughs> you would think that man, the African National Congress would go out and actually apologize to the people by doing by like, but the African National Congress is not doing that man. These people they keep insisting that they are doing a wonderful job. The ANC keeps insisting that today because of the ANC, the people of this country man are living good. The people of this country are having a much better life under the ANC. They are refusing to see what the country is today. They are refusing. But can you blame the, the likes of Ramapos for actually thinking that the ANC is doing an amazing job? Because everywhere where Ramaphosa goes, they are welcoming him with warm hands everywhere where he goes. Look at the stadium right now, man. The stadium is full. The stadium is full. So do you blame Ramaphosa I mean, for standing on stage and saying that, guys, the ANC is doing an amazing job. The people of this country, they love the African National Congress, despite of what these political parties and these politicians are saying. The people of this country, they love the African National Congress. That's why we are going to insist that we have been doing a wonderful job, because the people of us, even when we go to the people, the people are welcoming to us, are welcome to us. The ANC ministers, the ANC MMCs, the ANC parliamentarians, they're going to go to our neighborhoods, and people are going to give them the warm welcome. People are not going to say, guys, we are not working. Look how uh, like, look how dirty our streets are. People are not going to say that. You can see our children are sitting at home, guys. What are you going to do about this crime? What are you going to do about these levels of depression that teenagers are suffering right now? They are not going to ask them about all of those. They are not going to ask them about nothing. The people of this country, I mean, right now, as we speak, you see president is doing stadium to stadium. The comrades, the parliamentarians, and they are coming to the neighborhood, and the people are going to welcome them with warm hands. They are going to promise the people that, guys, this time we are going to give you clean governance. We are going to make sure that your children are waking. They are going to promise people the same things that the ANC has already promised people before. People are welcoming to the African National Congress, man. This is why some of these leaders in the African National Congress, man, like, this is why they, they, they fail to see what the party has done. Because everywhere they go, people love them. So they assume that, guys, we are doing a wonderful job. These people, man, are welcoming to us. They are welcoming to us, man. I remember people laughing at Ramaphosa when he was doing the rounds during the week. Yeah, people will say, yeah, not so many people went to that church where Ramaphosa went. Not so many people went to that stadium where Ramaphosa went. But as soon as ANC starts doing a major event, that's when you saw that people actually love the African National Congress. People love the African National Congress, man. They don't care about Ramaphosa attending a church service in Pumalanga. They are not going to go there. Yeah, they're going to watch on television. It's fine. It's fine. But when Ramaphosa takes... A biggest stadium in there when Ramaphosa picks a bigger stadium and says that everyone who loves the ANC must come here. People are coming. People are coming. So these people, men, like that's why these people think they are doing an amazing job. That's why these people, men, are totally out of touch with reality. They don't have to be in touch with reality. People, men, are signaling to the African National Congress that you guys are doing a wonderful job. That's what this, that's what people in the country are signaling to the ANC. That's why the ANC is so arrogant. That's why the ministers of the ANC are so arrogant. That's why everyone within the ANC is so arrogant because the people are signaling to them that, man, no matter what the ANC does, I might be angry with the ANC. I might hate the ANC at a particular time, but I'm not going to vote for another political party. Instead, I might as well sit at home. If I'm not going to vote for the ANC in these coming elections, I am going to sit at home.
they still enjoy the majority of the support, man. <laughs> they still enjoy majority of support. Right now, I mean, South Africa is being held hostage by its people. It is no longer the politicians. The ANC has already proven to the people of this country that, man, they are not interested in governing. The ANC has already showed the people of this country that, man, we are not for the people. We don't care about the people. The only thing that we care about are those tenders. That's the only thing that the ANC cares about. But right now, South Africa is being held hostage by the poor majority people in this country. <laughs> we are being held hostage by these people, man. You see these people that are, that, that are full there in the stadium. These are the people that are holding the country hostage. The people who are going to Moses Mabida Stadium to fill up Moses Mabida Stadium. When Ramaphosa stands again on the podium telling the people of this country that the ANC has done a, a wonderful job. Those people are the people who are holding back the country. The country is being held at hostage, man. Option as a thorny issue which is reversing progress made and taking away from ordinary people. Corruption, whether in government, in business, in society, detracts from government's ability to improve the conditions of living of our people. I mean, like it says... <laughs> <laughs> says the president of the most corrupt party the president of the most corrupt party but is condemning corruption he's talking about how bad corruption is but he is the president of the most corrupt political party this man stuffed millions in his sofas and his bed millions but he's standing there talking about corruption and how bad corruption is Ramaphosa like the likes of Ramaphosa and the ANC as a whole, they understand that, man, no matter what we do to these people, man, these people are beholden to us. These people are beholden to us. They will always listen to us. No matter what we say, no matter what we do, they are going to listen to us. We are going to tell them that corruption is the worst form of crime. But we are the biggest corrupt, we are the, 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 the biggest, we are the most corrupt party. We are the most corrupt party, but we are going to go to the people and tell people that corruption it is not right. And people are going to swallow that. People are going to swallow that. That's why when I started the video, I, I said, if we lived in the same country, Ramaphosa was never going to move as freely as he wanted. Ramaphosa was never going to go anywhere. The ministers of the ANC, they were never going to be able to come to the neighborhoods to continue to lie to the people. They were never going to be able to do that. Many people were going to confront these people. And make these people understand that you guys being there in parliament, being there on top, you are doing nothing for us. We are suffering right now. We are suffering. We know that you are giving us the grants, but it is not enough. We don't care about the grants. We want employment. We want our children to find employment. We want to be employed too. You would think the ANC would be confronted. You would think the ANC would be confronted, but no. 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 It is not. If anything, they are welcoming ANC with warm hands. They are opening up their hands like this and hugging the president, telling him he's the best president the country has ever had. So right now, we can say whatever that we want to say. The political analyst, we can we can go on social media and complain about all we want, but guys, is it is it going to be enough? Is it going to be enough to dethrone the ANC? Ramaphosa. And man, the DA also needs to step up. In South Africa, we have three big political parties. We have the ANC, we have the DA, and we have the EFF. The DA cannot sit back and watch the EFF and the ANC do the stadium rallies almost every week. They cannot do that. They cannot do that, man. The DA also needs to show force. The DA needs to show the people of this country that, guys, we are also the Democratic Alliance. We are here. We are the second biggest opposition party. We are, the, we are the biggest opposition party in South Africa. We are the second largest political party in South Africa, man. But I feel like the DA is sitting at the back. The DA is sitting at the back, man, allowing the ANC and the, and, and, and the EFF to get away with everything. Allowing the ANC and the EFF to get away with everything. They need to challenge these people, man. They need to challenge these people, man. You see when people go to the stadiums like this, it is a show of force. It is a show of force. The DA also needs to start doing the rallies. They need to start doing the rallies. Otherwise, right now, people are not going to talk about them. They are going to replace them with the MK. 
instead of people talking about the DA, they are, they are now talking about MK. The DA, it is not part of the conversation right now. The DA needs to step up and also show force. They need to show force. Also commended the South African legal team, which represented the country at the International Court of Justice at The Hague on the genocide case against Israel. South Africa took the unprecedented step to go and lodge a case at the International Court of Justice to go and say that Israel is committing genocide in Gaza and in, on the West Bank and to urge the International Court to stop, to take a judgment that will stop that genocide. Meanwhile, now that the birthday celebrations are done and dusted, all eyes will be on the ANC's manifesto message next. Look how happy those people are, man. <laughs> Look how happy those people are. Those people are dancing, man. Those people are dancing. So, guys, I don't know if opposition parties it's going to be enough. I don't know if opposition parties, man, are actually going to 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 to, to dethrone the ANC. I don't know how they're going to do that, man. I don't know how they're going to do that, man. I didn't know the ANC still enjoys this kind of support. When Ramaphosa was here, the venue it is not it is not so big. So, as much as people went. It is not so big, but when I saw Ramaphosa, I mean, and filled up the whole stadium, the NC filling up the whole stadium, I was like, geez, these people are going to win the elections again, because you would think that the South Africans, man, being, being where we are as a country, you would think that people are sick and tired of the NC. You would think that people are sick and tired of the NC. You remember when Gatine McKenzie tried to fill up a stadium? I thought that was going to happen with Ramaphosa and the NC. I thought the stadium was going to be empty, and Ramaphosa was only going to address his cadres in that stadium. But no, no, thousands and thousands and thousands of people still turned out. Thousands and thousands of people still turned out. And these people, man, they are being reminded every single time that, guys, we know that the majority of you, you are unemployed, but we are taking care of you. And it is a good thing that we are taking care of you. It is a good thing that we are taking care of you. So, guys, I don't know how opposition parties are actually going to fight the ANC, man. I don't know how they're going to fight the ANC. Guys, please tell me what you think about Ramaphosa's speech, guys, on, on, on Saturday. Please tell me in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button. And the most important part, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabasa. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.